Hello friends, Trevor McIntyre here. Today I've got a complete Farm Fresh B29 APU we're going to be taking a look at. Now I acquired this APU some years ago from a lady in South Florida who ran a horse farm and she had actually found this on her property after she bought the place. Unfortunately the engine appears to be in rather poor condition. It looks like it had been sitting outside in the weather for who knows how many years and as such practically everything on this engine that could rust or corrode has done so. But it's all complete, everything's there, so let's take a look at it. Okay, over here we got an old carbon pile voltage regulator and a voltmeter. Now this was something that a past owner had rigged up himself. It didn't come from the factory like this, obviously. Down here we've got the throttle. You can see the original decal is still intact, which is always nice. Over here's the mag switch. Here we have the magneto and distributor. And you see we got some gnarly corrosion happening there. Lovely, lovely. Coming up here to the top of the engine, we've got the carburetor, air filter. Down here we've got the manual pull starter. Now the return springs on these things were notorious for breaking. And in fact, every one of these APUs I've ever come across, these are always broken. So that's a very common issue. Okay, back here we've got the scroll. Now this is part of the cooling system on this engine. Inside here is a scroll cage fan that's attached to the flywheel. And I'll probably do a separate video about the cooling systems on these engines and how they work. Here you can see the exhaust. Now be advised, these are wrapped in an asbestos tape. So if you're going to be fooling with one of these, make sure you take the proper precautions. Coming down here to the back side of the engine, we've got the oil pump, oil filter. Over here is a pressure relief valve and bypass. Now this bypass is a post-World War II modification. So if you have one of these engines and it doesn't have this bypass, then you know it's still in the original World War II configuration. After the war, when these engines came in for overhaul, this is one of the modifications they performed to them. And they actually replaced the entire pump and filter assembly as well at the same time. Over here we've got the fuel pump. And if you work on old World War II Jeeps, you'll probably recognize that. Back here, of course, you have the generator, which also doubled as a starter motor. It's an Eclipse Type P2, 28.5 volt, 200 amps. This is a scroll, also used for cooling the generator here. Now, right here, we have an hour meter. This is also a post-war modification. These APUs were used in a number of different aircraft after World War II, not just limited to the B-29, and there's still some being used today, believe it or not. And if you look at the data plate here, we can see the engine serial number is RA3635, so that tells us that this engine was built by Ranger during World War II for the B-29. And if we look down below it, we can see that it was overhauled in May of 1960. And if we look on the actual meter itself here, we'll see this engine has 31 hours on it since overhaul. Now, to put that into some perspective, the TBO, or time between overhaul on these engines, was 500 hours. So this was essentially a brand new engine before it was put out to pasture and left to rot. Well that's a quick overview of this APU. As you can see the engine is in rather poor condition. Hopefully we'll be able to breathe some life into this old girl yet. And I think while I'm out here I'm going to go ahead and pull the rocker box covers off and see what we got going on down there. So stand by one. All right, so we got the nuts backed off the rocker box covers here, and these are actually so rusted on there, end up back on the studs out with them. But let's open it up and see what we got. Okay, not too bad. Don't really see any rust or other areas of concern. Everything actually looks pretty good here. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with what we're looking at here, over here is your intake valve, exhaust valve. These are, of course, your rocker arms. Down here is the push rods. These are the valve springs. Now there are two springs here, an inner and an outer spring, but everything looks pretty good to go here. Let's go around to the other side and see what it looks like. Well that's not good. As you can see, 
that valve spring is toast. Now these rocker box covers, they actually have vents built into them, which is part of the cooling system on these engines. And you can see that vent permitted water to get in there, and that valve spring is gone. Now this isn't something that's going to be fatal to the engine. It's really no big deal to change out a valve spring. I can also tell by the position of the rocket arm that the valve is closed. So hopefully none of that moisture made it down there into the cylinder. And speaking of nasty surprises, go ahead and pop the oil cap over here. And as you can see, the filler neck has all kind of corrosion going on down there, which is never a good sign. However, the engine is still full of oil, albeit very nasty oil. So, might be able to bring this old girl back to life yet. I'm just going to have to start pulling some more parts off of her and see if there's any other nasty surprises waiting for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Life is good.